today, on this stage, I'm getting naked. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. I'm taking it all off. And by naked, I mean that I'm going to expose parts of myself that are not obvious. Now, during this process, I'm not going to ask you to get naked. But here's what I need from you. I need you to open up your heart, see yourself through parts of me, and allow your head to vroom. The year was 1984. I was born. Born to a beautiful, smart, and strong 15-year-old teenager, Nicole, who was already mother to a one-year-old baby boy, Durante. By the time I was five years old, I had been taken from my mother, separated from my brother, and bounced from house to house. During that time, my mom, still a young adult, was trying to figure life out. By 10 years old, I had experienced molestation, abandonment, verbal, and emotional abuse. By 12, I'd lost my virginity, became pregnant, and had an abortion all in the same year. Take a deep breath. <sighs> that was for y'all. <laughs> that was a lot to take in, I get it. By that point in my life, I had experienced more than most 40-year-old women. Between the ages of 14 and 16 years old, I was living on my own, sometimes in a house, sometimes homeless. Between the ages of 17, oh, that's a little precious. <laughs> Between the ages of 17 and 27 years old, I'd graduated from Job Corps, gave birth to a beautiful baby girl named Brittany, earned my GED, had um, moved across the country, and did some other amazing things. By that time, I had uh, been engaged twice. Well, I should say proposed to twice. Engaged once, and left with a dress to sell. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> Moved across the country, became gainfully employed, and had created a life that I could be proud of for me and my daughter. By age 30, I'd relocated back to my birth state of South Carolina after an 11-year hiatus, founded a nonprofit organization, forgave myself and my past, had the opportunity to spend the weekend with Oprah, Iyala Van Zant, Elizabeth Gilbert, and Deepak Chopra. By that point in my life, um, I was starting to live. During this same point in my life, I had also went out to have an opportunity to attend my first TEDx Greenville event. And after an unsuccessful attempt, I am now standing on the stage. I beat the odds, don't you think? <laughs> Let's talk about how I got here. How was I able to go through the pain and not get stuck in it? Now, I would be lying to you if I said it all just happened. The fact of the matter is that it didn't. It did then and it still does now take a lot of hard work and effort on my part. The purpose of my talk today is that you leave better than the way that you came, that you allow yourself to be awakened in such a way that you truly live life, that you decide that, become love, that, that come love of money, you're gonna get unstuck by unbecoming. Let's talk about the unbecome process. Unbecome is a three-step process. Surrender, work, live. Simple as one, two, three. Repeat after me. Surrender, surrender. Work, work, live. Yeah. All my family was ready. They was like, surrender, work, live. <laughs> They've heard it enough times. Um, so the unbecome process is, of course, as I said, as simple as one, two, three. And you're probably wondering if it's so simple, why isn't everybody doing it? Well, the fact of the matter is, simple does not mean easy. Now, let's be clear. This, is the type of, this isn't the type of process that's going to do the work for you. This is the type of process that you're going to have to work for. But trust me when I say, it's worth it. Your only requirement is to be ready and willing to release that which is no longer serving you, work through your forgiveness process, and live your best life. Let's break down those three steps to unbecome. Step one, surrender. Surrender everything you thought, the situation, the outcome, or even you were supposed to be. According to the hand that life dealt me, I thought I was supposed to be nothing. And not just nothing, but the bottom of nothing. 
I had to be brave enough to let go of the idea that I had been groomed to believe and adapt a new self-perspective, one that included believing in the impossible. Surrender is an action word, a word that requires something from you. It requires you to let go, to allow it, whatever it is, to pass. Make no mistake about it, surrender is a brave act. Why should you surrender? Because you are stuck and you've tried everything you know how to do and it's just not working. Whom should you surrender to? For me, that was surrendering to God. For you, it may be the same. For others, it may be the universe, the process, and if you're out here on your own, it may be even to yourself. Ultimately, the source of your pain is not where your healing will come from. No matter how many times they say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, that alone will not get rid of the hurt. It is still your decision to surrender the pain. Take another deep breath. Ah, release. Very good. So let's move on to the heart of the unbecome process. Step two. Step two, work. Work, by definition, means to actively um, involve mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. The work that I'm referring to is the F word that everybody wants to talk about, but most aren't actually willing to do. What is that word? Forgiveness. Yes, forgiveness. I like Oprah's definition of this word, which means to let go of the hope that the past can be any different. It's saying, you know what? It is what it is. I'm not going to allow what happened to me to keep me stuck. I must move forward. What I do understand is that oftentimes we're afraid to forgive because we think in forgiving, it gives permission to someone else to hurt us again. I get it. I've been there. Like last year, I could wholeheartedly feel God commissioning me to forgive the person who molested me from age 5 to age 14. I absolutely did not want to. I felt like the fact that I didn't show up to his house and demand his life in my hands was good enough. I had some work to do, especially if I was going to inspire people to live their best life. So I took action. I went to the law. They took their time. I went to work on me. I wrote them a four-page letter detailing every situation for every word that I wrote. I unbecame. I mailed that letter off. That wasn't easy, but boy, was it worth it. The thing about forgiveness is that it's like surrender, an action word. Forgiveness allows you room to grow up, right? Forgiveness allows you room to grow up. It teaches you to be an extender of grace. It allows you to give somebody else another chance, even when you don't think they deserve it. What I can tell you the truth is, is that a life in itself doesn't have a whole bunch of guarantees. But what I can guarantee you is this, is that the act of forgiveness is much better. The freedom of forgiveness is much easier to bear than the weight of a grudge. Take a deep breath. Release. That's for you and me that time. Now that we've covered surrender and work, let's live. Step three, live. What is living and how do I do it? Living is subjective. Let me show you what living looks like. Living is me standing on this stage speaking life to you. It could be a peace of mind. It's the feeling of being brokenhearted and choosing to love again. It's starting a new relationship, retiring from that nine to five in order to live out your true purpose. It's retiring that old played out hairstyle. <laughs> it's, it's, start, it's learning a new language, tasting a new food. Simply put, it's being a brave, taking a chance, and making it happen. What you need to know about living is this, that each and every day you wake up, you are only one decision away from continuing the same old life that you have, and only one decision away from creating the life that you were created to live. Those are the three steps to unbecome. Surrender, surrender work, work, live. live. I give orders through my eyes. When I look at you like this, that's what that means. <laughs> this journey, this journey, this journey, this journey is not meant to be done alone. 
Although I've had some extreme hardships over the past 30 years, I've also had some amazing people in these first rows who believed I could be more than my circumstances. And for you guys, y'all in the back too, I'm forever grateful. Said I wouldn't go cry on stage. The Unbecome process is your champion in overcoming everything that life throws your way. My hope for you today is that you decide to create your own best life by unbecoming. Go get your life. Thank you. All right.